Good morning, Thurgers. It's good to see you back today. Hope you guys had a well-rested evening yesterday. It is Wednesday, so don't forget, on Wednesdays, we are also doing our DMA and checking it twice. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get started with our week 29, day three. So if you notice here, we have some missing numbers in our equations. We're missing the factor here. Remember that when you're multiplying numbers, these are called factors. So this is a factor and this is your product. So we want to know how many groups of four, because this is the groups, we want to know how many groups of four it takes to make 24. So I can do a couple of different things. I could take groups of four and count by four. So four and four more makes eight and four more makes 12 and four more makes 16. Add four more, that's 20 and four more makes 24. So when I was skip counting by multiples of four, how many groups of four did it take for me to get to my total? Right, six groups of four. Now, I could do four plus four is eight, plus four is 12, plus four is 16, plus four is 20, plus four is 24. So basically what I can do is to find this missing factor, I can use repeated addition or I can use skip counting by multiples of four to get how many groups of four to my total. Now, the same, I can do the same thing for three groups of what equals 21. Well, remember, I can switch my factors and still get the same product. So if I have blank groups of three equals 21, I can still count by threes to get what this missing factor is, right? So three plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12, plus three is what? 15, plus three is, right, 18, plus three is, 21. So, how many groups of three did it take for me to add to make 21? So if you said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you would be correct. So three groups of seven and seven groups of three are both going to equal 21. Now, here I'm missing my dividend. Now, remember, your dividend is your total objects that are in the group. So we're missing our total here. We know how many groups we have. We know how many is in each group. So what we need to do is we need to use multiplication to help us find this missing dividend. So remember, the four can be your groups and the five will be the number in each group. So what is four groups of five? Right, it's going to be 20. So my missing dividend is going to be 20. What that means is if I take 20 objects and I put them into four equal groups, there's going to be five here. I'm gonna take another five and that's gonna give me 10 left. I'm gonna take out another five, that's gonna leave me with five left. I'm gonna take out another five, and now I'm at zero. So I can use what my understanding is repeated subtraction, and I can take away five, and that leaves me with 15. 
Then I take 15 and subtract another 5 and put it in this group, and that leaves me with 10. Then I take out another 5, put it in this group, and that leaves me with 5. And finally, I use another 5 and subtract, and that leaves me with 0. So remember, division is repeated subtraction. You're taking the whole and pulling out groups to put them into equal groups, and you're looking for how many is in each group. Well, to find that missing total, you can use multiplication to help you with that. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this subtraction problem. We have the total. We're taking out 224, and we want to find the missing part. So this is whole, all of it. This is part of this whole, and this is the other part. Okay? This is called your difference. It's called your what? Difference. Now, when I go to subtract, I can use what I know about... I could start with 405 and then subtract 200. What does that leave me with when I take 200 from 400? Well, I can have 205, right? Then if I take 205 and subtract 20, well, you'll notice here I don't have any 10s, which tells me I'm at the beginning of my 100. So if I take 10 away, that would be 195. If I take another 10 away, that leaves me with 185. Now, I've taken my 200, I've taken my 20, now I'm going to take, whoops, 185 and subtract 8. Now, I see 5 here, but then I also need to take another 3 away. So if I take this 5 out of 180, that would leave me, or yeah, if I take this 5 from 185, that would leave me with... 180, and then subtract 3 more from 180, that should give you 177. Okay, this is just one way to show this work. Another way is you can use the algorithm. Algorithm. And you line up your place values by ones, tens, and hundreds. You start in the ones place and you subtract. So if I have eight and I want to subtract from that five, I can't subtract eight from the five. Why? Because I don't have enough. Some of you want to put three here. Is three plus eight five? No, so you should be able to check your subtraction by using addition. And 3 plus 8 is not 5. So, what we need to do here is we need to be able to subtract, which tells me I need to borrow from the tens place. But as you notice, there are no tens to subtract or borrow from. So, I need some tens, and in order for me to do that, I'm going to borrow 100, and I'm going to group it as 10 tens. Because what is 10 tens? It's 100. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to borrow one of these tens and I'm going to regroup it as 15 now. Now I can subtract. So if I take 15 and I subtract 8, I get a difference of 7 and I can check. Is 8 plus 7 going to be 15? Well, 7 plus 7 is 14, so 8 plus 7 must be 15. Now I go to the tens. I have 90. I'm subtracting two tens, which is 70, right. Now, again, I can check my subtraction and add 70 plus 20 is 90. Seven tens plus two tens is nine tens. Now I go to my ones. Three minus two. Three minus 200 is 100. Check your subtraction is 100 plus 200, 300. Yes. 
So remember, you can always check your subtraction by taking the two parts and adding them back together to find, is that the total? So 8 plus 7 is 15. Carry the 10. 70 plus one more 10 is 80. Plus one more 10 is 90. Plus one more 10 is 100. I'm carrying that 100. 200 plus 100 is 300. Plus 100 is 400. Well, do these match? Yes, they do. So we have done our subtraction correctly. Remember, all three numbers have to be in both equations when you're checking addition and subtraction. Okay? All right. Let's take a look at the last. It's a number line. And so we're going to divide the number line into eighths. So remember, we can start with half. And I'm just going to label that half up above here so we can keep track of where the half is. Then between each half are my fourths. So I'm just going to label, label those. And of course, this can also be two fourths. Then remember between every fourth, I get two eighths. So this is going to be two eighths. This is going to be two eighths. And finally, this is going to be 2 eighths, which is 8 eighths, right? So 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, and finally 8 eighths, which is equal to 1 whole. Now, it asks me to label where 1 8 is, so I'm just going to place a point at the 1 8 and I'm going to place a point at the 4 8 Now remember, 4 8 is also in simplest form equivalent to half. Okay? And remember, 8 8 in simplest form is going to be equal to 1 whole. Now, today what I want you to do is I want you to Practice, once again, I want you to round 405 to the nearest 100 and 228 to the nearest 100. And I want you to find the difference and estimate the difference. Difference means you're subtracting. So round to the nearest 100 and then subtract to find the difference. All right, I'll be checking later, and have a great Wednesday, guys.